morning, good afternoon, wherever you're from. This is going to be another review on another album from another band. Last time I did a review on Triumph live at Sweden. I got a comment to do a review on another album for another band. I'm going to do that right now. Before I do that, quick comment on the Triumph review. I mentioned live at Sweden, stages, and live at the U.S. Festival. I forgot to mention that I had this one. I got it used at a store. Triumph in concert. King Biscuit Flower Hour Presents. And it does have 13 tracks. This was recorded, I'm guessing, because of the track list during their release of their 1981 album, Allied Forces, which was probably their biggest album. And then there are a lot of tracks off their 1980 release, Progressions of Power, and do, 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 do. Rock and Roll Machine, and then there is an unreleased one, re-released, called In the Beginning. Biggest omission off this is Magic Power. Don't know why it's on, not on there, but oh well. All right, I got a comment from a viewer to do a review on Rush's 2112. This is an actual CD that I bought in high school, about 1988-89, maybe 1990. That was back in the days when they came in big, long cardboard boxes, and they were kind of cool. I used to kind of hang them up on the wall. I was asked to review this, and as a Rush fan, I can't say aficionado, but a Rush fan, ever since I was about in fifth grade or so, when MTV came out, didn't really like them that much. They were on quite a bit. And used to play YYZ a lot, the instrumental, during the technical difficulties. And it would be always be on. It was kind of annoying. But then I grew to like them. My brother had a bunch of the records, you know, those little big things. And I started listening to those, and I, they kind of grew on me after a while. Got into them in the 80s. Then when you get into a band, you want to get all their stuff. So going back to the 70s, again, this is 2112. Quick review over all the tracks. 2112 refers to a year in time, in the future obviously, because right now it's 2013. And track number one has actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parts to it. This is back in the days when they used to do concept albums. If this were an album, record, or a tape, this track, 2112, track number one would take up the whole side of the album. You play the record, boom, and then other side, bam. Comes with Overture, Temples of Syrinx, Discovery, Presentation, Oracle of the Dream, Soliloquy, and Grand Finale. Of these, and if you put it in a player, you're able to skip around. Part two of 2112, Temples of Syrinx is the one that I listen to the most backing up actually part one overture then it rolls into temples of syrinx because it's fast it's kind of cool a lot of yelling and screaming fast drums fast guitars slows down here and there power chords and whatnot in discovery presentation oracle of dream soliloquy then it kind of picks up and goes a little insane in the grand finale so that's about 18 minutes or so long, so that's a pretty long time for those who don't listen to Rush and are used to singles, radio-friendly, whatever, three to four minutes long at the most. Track number two, Passage to Bangkok. That's a slower song, and if you listen to the words, I believe they're referring to the Latin lettuce on that one. So that's all right. I don't know if I would. It's not. That's the one I skip over a lot. Twilight Zone number three. Again, I skip over here and there. It's based on the television program, of course, and they were big fans. They'd have a lot of downtime when touring, and they'd watch television. And uh, that one's really slow. Number four, Lessons, is actually pretty cool. It kind of picks things up with a cool acoustic guitar intro. I'm not big on acoustic guitar, but listening to that and the steady beat that follows is actually kind of a peppy song. So that one I listen to quite a bit. Number five, Tears, is really slow. 
I mean, you gotta have some patience to get through that one. And then number six, something for nothing, caught on enough that it would be on other live releases, and it's an alright song. So if you're listening to this in your car, Overture, Temples of Syrinx, Lessons, and Something for Nothing are the ones that you'd probably listen to. The Dogs, I call them, probably Passage to Bangkok, Twilight Zone, and Tears. Those are for diehard Rush fans only. Now Rush, and I'll do a separate video on the band itself, to me they're broken up into decades, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then of course 21st century and beyond. So 2112 released in 1976 by Polygram Records. I would recommend if you're going to give somebody an album to listen to from the 1970s of Rush, All the World's a Stage. This is the original release from Mercury Records. And I call it the original release, you can tell, because it stops at track number nine. On the re release and on the tape cassette version and the double album, there's a track number 10, and it is. Doo, 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 what is it? Oh, What You're Doing. That's the name of the song. It's off their first album, the one without Neil Peart. And this one, maybe I'll do a separate review just to let you know, it has some good songs from Crest of Steel, which is one of their lesser albums, Bastille Day, whatnot. Stuff from Fly By Night, a catchy tune, actually, Fly By Night. Something For Nothing, of course. Lakeside Park, it's pretty cool. Then you get 2112, which is a shorter version of 2112. And then By Torn the Snow Dog from Fly By Night, that's pretty cool. In the End, that's from their first album. No, that's from Fly By Night, I believe. Man, I gotta look that up. And then Working Man, segueing into Finding My Way. This is okay. But 1970s Rush, All the World's a Stage. Thanks a lot for listening. AlleghenyMountainRadio.org, Mondays, 8 to 10 p.m. See you then.